I were to guess, I think I've probably drawn about 15,000 people at Washington Square Park. There's not many salary positions as an illustrator or artist. I figured, all right, well, I have to figure out a way to pay my rent and pay the bills as an artist. Basically, how I got fast at drawing is by drawing people on the subway. I think the most amount of money I made was about $1,300 in a day. My name is Zach Crawford. I'm an illustrator in New York City. I've been a professional artist for the past five years, and I make my entire living doing it. So this is Zach. He's one of my good friends. We met actually at Parsons. He was one of the people to actually convince me to leave art school and pursue art on my own. We're gonna get into all that. Zach is probably one of the best artists I know, and he's also the most in-person successful artist I know. It's hard to explain, but a lot of people and a lot of my friends are really successful on social media because they're great artists, of course, but because they have leveraged social media to make money and you know gain followings and all the other opportunities. Zach although he's on Instagram and you should follow him, of course, he doesn't really leverage social media. He's just in person, drawing all day, every day, the last, you know, how many years he's been alive and has just gained so much success through just drawing so much and honing his skills and you're gonna hear all about it. So it's really interesting and I'm so glad I finally got to make this video with me boy. Ready? Yeah. Okay, there's nothing to be ready about. All am right, I looking um, at you or am I looking at the camera? Uh, what are your what are your origins? Like when did you start drawing? Where did you learn to draw? What were your first experiences with drawing? So I think I fell in love with drawing by watching animated movies as a kid. Between Disney and Studio Ghibli movies and anime and cartoons on Cartoon Network. Seeing people basically create their imaginations and bring their imaginations to life made me want to draw. And so since I was very young, I knew I wanted to be an artist. And my parents saw that I was drawing every day and so they became supportive and wanted to help me facilitate that in my life. And so we pretty much moved to New York City so that I could go to LaGuardia High School, which is a prestigious arts high school in the US. And that's where I had two hours of art practice every day. I even got to start figure drawing then at the age of 15. That's when I knew like, okay, this is like what I want to learn at college too, at Parsons. So I applied for illustration, met you at a figure drawing class, Woo. funny enough. The first time I ever met Zach, he convinced me to drop out of Parsons. <laughs> yep, yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> it's interesting because you and I took different routes in art, mm -hmm. but we both became full-time artists and we're here together today. Yeah. And so, you followed my advice of dropping out of college, and then you uh, got into YouTube, and that's been super cool to watch. I did finish college, but I wasn't thrilled with how they tried to prepare us to be artists in the in the field. And so I sort of took on my, my own grassroots approach of going to Washington Square Park and drawing portraits. And that's really where I launched my career as a full-time artist. Yeah, so I've been coming here every weekend and every summer and fall, as long as the weather is good, I come out and draw. When it's raining, obviously I can't draw because the paper gets wet. No one wants to stand outside. I love it! Since day one, I made some money. I knew I could pay my rent for the month if I just kept up enough. And then over time, I optimized my business. I got a table, I put my sketchbooks out, I got business cards. Recently, I started drawing on tote bags and all those uh, changes in increase the amount of money that I make here at the park. See, I already have a line of people waiting for me and I'm not even there. My bad. You know, basically it was a culmination of there's not many salary positions as an illustrator or artist, clearly, you know. I figured, all right, well, I have to figure out a way to pay my rent and pay the bills as an artist. So I'm gonna try to go to Washington Square Park and draw people there. I didn't see anyone else drawing people there, so I knew that that, like I could fill that niche essentially and fill that role in the park. If I were to guess, I think I've probably drawn about 15,000 people at Washington Square Park, and then probably in total in my life, maybe 100,000 people. That's... Most of those not knowing that they're getting drawn. <laughs> That's crazy, dude. So I try to keep my rates at the park pretty affordable. Usually I ask for $25 for a drawing, and that could be one to two people in that. And then if there are larger groups, then I would like ask for a little bit more money. And then a drawing takes about 10 to 15 minutes. I'm a big believer that this is one of the most creative and artistic hubs, expressive hubs in the world. Um, it's gotten to the point where I've drawn enough people in this park where I've bumped into people internationally 
in other countries in Mexico City, and they recognized me and said, hey, you drew my portrait at Washington Square Park. So this is a major hub for artists and for people to pass through. And uh, yeah, sort of the culture is wild and crazy and people are doing it like whatever they love and you gotta keep it that way. Yes, sir. <laughs> One of the best things I've gotten from the park is simply the networking. Just putting myself out there, you never know who's going to cross your path. And so my collaboration with Moleskin as an ambassador for them originated from the park because I put my sketchbooks out. They're all Moleskin. I've been using those for 15 years. And so that's been great. Um, I'm now teaching workshops at Chelsea Market. I've been doing events at different hotels like the Standard in New York. And that's all thanks to just, you know, people passing through the park and taking my card. And for me, even in this creative field, it's hard to fathom how much work and discipline it takes to get on Zach's level. Drawing every day for years, constantly learning is no easy task, but there actually are great online tools to help you learn new skills and develop in these creative outlets. Like Skillshare, which is the largest online learning community with thousands of classes ranging from illustration, watercolor, photography, music, entrepreneurial skills, marketing, and everything in between. If you wanna get on Zach's level, you have to train, and Skillshare has amazing classes, and they're all taught by industry-leading professionals within each field, which is like really amazing. It's certainly been a tool for me over the past five years, but there are other great classes specifically for drawing and illustrating, like the one from Carly Kuhn, which is what I would recommend if you're trying to be like Zach, tapping into the creative spark of drawing and having all of these awesome assignments to just dive into drawing in general. And Skillshare is great because whether you just want to learn basics like of watercolor or you're trying to create a full-blown creative business, Skillshare has classes for every type of person. So check out the link in the description. If you're trying to unlock some new skills and dive deep into something, the first 1,000 people who click the link will get one month of a free trial. So it's pretty awesome. Basically, how I got fast at drawing and am able to draw a person in less than 10 minutes is by drawing people on the subway. So that's a practice I started during high school on my commutes to high school, back home, wherever, where I'd bring a little sketchbook with me and I would draw whoever was in front of me. Not knowing when the person would get off, there's this factor of unpredictability in that. I don't know how long I have to draw this person, so I have to try to draw them as fast as possible. And I think that builds up my level of like being able to draw quickly, which has been one of the huge skill sets that have been important in my career as an artist. Has there been a day that you can remember where you haven't sketched for at least 10 minutes? Probably the days after after like weekends at the park where I just... You don't draw. Yeah, well, maybe I'll draw like on the subway, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you're basically drawing every single day of your life. About, yeah. For many hours. Yeah. So since I can only draw people in the summer and fall in New York, and once it gets too cold out, I can't go out there anymore. I usually spend a few months away during the winter abroad. So usually I go somewhere warm or nice. Mm -hmm. Last year, I applied my formula that I developed at the park in Jerusalem, in Israel. And I went out one night. Obviously, I didn't have my banner, but I wrote on a cardboard sign, portrait drawings in English. And then I looked up what that was in Hebrew, and I wrote that on there. And then I put the sign out, and sure enough, I immediately started uh, drawing people. So that night, I made however many shekels, but it was about yeah. 75 to to $100. I think that's the beauty of drawing people and doing portraiture is that everyone sort of wants to see themselves drawn yeah. or your interpretation of them. And no matter where you are in the world, like that's the universal connecting factor between us is, you know, that we're all human, yeah. we've all got faces and people want to see their faces. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Zach will oblige. <laughs> are you excited to help me build this crazy thing, Studio SLU, the setup right behind you? Yeah, I mean, it's really special because you and I met in a figure drawing session. Yeah. And what was cool is that it was a it was an extracurricular thing at Parsons and it wasn't even like we were getting graded on it. It was yeah. just out of our own love of drawing that brought us there, right? Yeah. And so it's really special to be here today on the first session of our Studio Slew drawing, figure drawing class. I was pretty happy. Yeah. That's pretty romantic. And you're equally as handsome as the first time I met you. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Your veins are bulging just like the first day. I was like, damn, this guy's amazing <laughs> at drawing and he's handsome. Something's gotta be wrong with him. And your hair was longer. <laughs> I know, it looked your like Your mustache it. hairs were maybe a little longer. Yeah. What would you say to people who want to 
lead a life similar to yours? Yeah, well, me personally, I love drawing, I draw fast, and so this is the career that I've sort of carved for myself, but I think the sort of general advice I would give would be to follow what you love and in art, whether that's your style or whatever, and find a way to make it marketable. And so that could either be through social media, that could be through selling prints, that could be going to conventions, selling your prints or stickers or doing drawings live at events. Are you proud of yourself for where you are? Would, would younger Zach in middle school look at Zach right now and be amped? And why do you think so? Yeah, I think he would be amped because he has a lot of freedom in his life. He can travel. He's been going to interesting places that drawing has brought him and sort of my whole, the way I structure my life is following where drawing leads me. And so drawing, like five years ago on this day, I was in Egypt. This company hired me to go out there for a month and work on their, illustrate their branding. I don't know if back then I wanted to go to Egypt necessarily or I had the desire, but the opportunity presented itself through my art. And so I let my art sort of take me there. And sort of how I operate in my life is just following wherever my art takes me whether that's to Indiana two weeks ago, or to Egypt, or to Costa Rica, and to Hong Kong this February, I believe. That's sort of just how I follow my, my path. Or this dusty studio. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> that's great, that's a great answer. Uh, and that's really, that's really happy. And I think you are a beacon of light for illustration, but also just sheer work ethic and determination to make your dream come true. Now give me a kiss. <laughs> I'm hungry too. <laughs> it's gonna look good, bro. Yeah, I trust you. I know I'm in good hands. Yeah, baby. Just make me look confident and handsome. You are. Now you just start talking with like a really high voice after the camera stops rolling. <laughs>